Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to be going over my first furniture flip and how I actually lost money doing it. I'll show you what I bought, the process of fixing it up, including painting and sanding, which was a huge learning lesson for me. At the end of the video I'll be going over what I learned, how you can be profitable flipping furniture, because it is possible, and if I'll continue flipping furniture in the future. Also, after the intro I'll be going over my first $50 giveaway with some pretty questionable rules. Um, yeah, so stick around. All right, let's get it. Hey everyone, my name is Steve, and this is Pennies to Profit, where I show you how to turn your pennies into profit with side hustles that you can do at home. This year, I'm turning my $600 stimulus check into $20,000 by the end of the year. After the last video, I was at $2,429. Stick around until the end of the video so you can see where I'm at now. If you want to follow along in my side hustle journey, feel free to subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me and it lets me know that I'm making the right content. Before I get into the furniture flip side of this video, I want to go over my $50 giveaway. I thought of this the other day as I was driving around and it made me laugh, so I wanted to try it out. To win, all you need to do is be a subscriber to this channel and find this sloth later on in the video and put the timestamp in the comment section below along with what your spirit animal is. That's it. I'll randomly select one of the comments and present the winner in the next video. I don't know why I thought that was so funny. I just thought the image of like, just a, a sloth picture just like coming out in one of the videos. Um, I, as you saw in my last video, there was that like fat cat that just like mobbed around in one of the photos. And I was laughing so hard as I was putting that together. It was absolutely ridiculous nobody even commented it on it in the last video um so no one really cares but i thought it was super funny so find the sloth and you win 50 dollars. okay back to the furniture flipping side of the video so like i said earlier i'm going to be fixing up furniture in this video that i found at a thrift store i'm going to be fixing up this piece right here and turning it into this piece right here the bulk of this video is going to be going over how i fixed it up what products i used sanding it down, painting it, and then finally finishing it with a wax sealer. Like I said in the previous video, I've never flipped furniture before. Like I've never actually uh, sanded it down, repainted it, and then tried to resell it for a profit. So this was, uh, this is an interesting project. I've got a lot of work to do, so let's just jump right into it. All right, I'm in the garage, just about to start, but I wanted to go over what I'm gonna use to fix this thing up. Um, there's the TSP, which is the cleaning solution, brushes. I'm gonna be spray painting these things gold. Um, so I got the metallic old gold spray paint, and then I'm gonna be using a sander to just sand it down so I have some edges to go off of. There's a couple places that look a little uh, injured at the moment. And then there's also this part right here. I'm just gonna super glue this and clamp this down. And then with these parts, nothing's really that dented in here. Um, if something looks bad like this, I might go over with a, this part right here, I might go over with a, I forget what they call it, like a, a wood, um, wood alternative, and then put that on there and then sand it down when it dries. All right, there we go. Okay, so step one is just to add the TSB and then wipe this thing down. So I'm just gonna put a little, about eight ounces and a gallon. And I don't have a full gallon, so about eight ounces and half a gallon, uh, or four ounces and half gallon. And then, um, yeah. All right, so I noticed there is um, there's a crack in the wood, so I'm just gonna use some super glue. I'm going to uh, adhere it to the wood and then clamp it down and then uh, sand it out later. Okay. All 
All right, so I also noticed that there is a little bit of a hole in the wood here, like a pretty big dent. So I just got some premium wood filler and I'm just gonna rub it on the spot there and um, let it dry and then sand it down later. I wiped away all the dirt and all the, all the grime from the piece. I also did the wood filler and the super glue on the cracked areas. So now I'm going to remove the hardware, get those off to the side and then start sanding. Okay, so the wood filler has dried, the TSB has dried. Um, you wanna give the wood a little bit to dry. If you're gonna sand right after you, when the wood is still wet, it's going to, it's gonna like tear up the wood and not, not look the best. Um, so you wanna give it a, a, a few hours to dry. And then I'm actually going to use a, a cornered sander because this is like a smaller piece and there's a lot of like fine edges there. So I'm just gonna use a sander that can get into all of those little uh, grooves there. I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper. Okay, so now I'm just going to remove all of this dust with um, one of my dust brushes, and then I'm gonna go over that with just some soapy water in that TSP again. All right, so I just finished with the sanding and then I wiped it all down with the TSP again. Um, you can just use uh, soapy water, I guess, with the after the sanding. So that was actually my first time ever using a sander. So it was, it was pretty sweet. So there it is right now. It's all, uh, the dust is all off of it. So it's ready to be painted and to be using the <clears throat> linen white chalk paint. And I don't need to spray it down with water, it just says to mix well. Um, so I'll be doing that right now and putting on my first coat. All right. All right, so my phone ended up dying during the painting of the first coat, but I am finished with the first coat. I let it dry for about two hours and I got dinner and now I'm ready to put the second coat on. So I'm gonna do that now. It looks looks all right. Obviously with the only the first coat, there's a lot of areas where um, it looks like you can just see straight through. Um, I don't know if a if a second coat will completely fix that or not, um, but we'll see. All right, here we go.
All right, so I just finished the second coat. It looks pretty good. Um, so look at that. Obviously there's, you can probably see there's still some spots. Um, so I'll have to touch it up in the morning. I'm gonna let it sit overnight. There's the dresser down there. Um, or not the dresser, but the, the top is over there. And so I just made sure that any like blotches or any big areas, um, in, any big like paint stains, I just went over and smoothed them out with the brush. Um, I'm gonna do one more once over just to make sure that there aren't any like big clusters um, before I go to bed and leave it, leave it alone. Um, I'm also gonna make sure that I uh, spray paint the, um, the finishes. So I'm just gonna go and do a gold uh, spray paint on the finish and on the handles and see how that looks. I also bought matte black as well, so I can do like a white and black uh, element to it or I can do a white and gold. So we'll see here in a second. I'm gonna do the gold first and put it on tomorrow and see how it looks. All right. All right, so it is the next day. It looks like things are progressing. Um, the second coat took really well. There's just a couple spots that I see that um, you could still see through to the wood. So I'm gonna do another coat real quick. I also came over here and uh, spray painted those one more time. Um, when I woke up, there was a few little spots on there that looked like the, the paint had already come off. Um, so I just spray painted them one more time. In about an hour, I'll flip them over and spray paint again. And then I'll attach them back to this. Probably in the next two hours, I can apply the final wax coat to, to finish the whole product. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll be good to list. All right. I just finished the third and hopefully final coat. It looks like pretty much everything is covered. It's looking good. Um, well, there she is, just drying over there. Notice a few spots that I could probably touch up on. But yeah, so that's drying. Probably in the next hour to two hours, I'll end up um, putting the wax sealer on and then I have those guys that are cooking out there. Um, it, I just flipped them over and just put another coat of spray paint on. That's now my second coat on both sides. So that looks like it's, looks like this should probably be the final coat for those guys. Um, and then what I'm going to be using is a wax decorative finish, seals and protects. Um, it's just a clear wax and from people at Home Depot and Lowe's and the YouTubers, um, when you do a chalk finish or like a chalk paint, um, you should do a wax sealant over the top. All right, cool. That's what will be next. So I'm back out here looking at the wooden uh, display and it looks really good. Um, so there's that. There were a few pieces that I needed to touch up on. And so actually after I put the wax down, I actually looked at a, a few different places that I needed to reapply some, some paint. So I did that. Um, I put on another coat of the wax and I actually used I used a, a brush with the circular bristles at the end, a little bit thicker of a brush, and it worked so much better than using the cloth. When I was using cloth before, I would it was like kind of really messy getting all over the cloth and then it wasn't coming off or it wasn't being applied very ev evenly. Um, using this thing was so much more helpful. So I strongly recommend this when you're using 
a uh, like a chalk paint. So now I'm just gonna put on the hardware and we're gonna list it on Facebook Marketplace. All right, so here is the final project. Looks so good. I'll show the pictures here in just a second. Um, but yeah, I think the pictures came out well. I learned from doing the couches that the pictures are very helpful. Um, so I'm going to be editing those a little bit, boosting those up a little. Um, but yeah, it looks it looks good, and uh, yeah, now it's just time to post it on Facebook Marketplace. So that was the whole process. Looks pretty sweet, right? Like the title of the video suggests, I still haven't sold it. It's just sitting on Facebook Marketplace with not a lot of views. So what went wrong? Here are a few lessons that I learned throughout this process. And then while also trying to research and watch other furniture flippers and what they did to actually make a profit. The first lesson that I learned is make sure the profit is going to justify the work. What I mean by that is the maximum that I was going to sell this piece for or that I wanted to sell this piece for was $150 and I bought it for 35. Now I selected a smaller piece because I thought that was going to be easier to fix up, but turns out I had to get all the way around certain aspects of the furniture because it was basically in a and a three-dimensional object with the middle cut out, I had to do so much more work to get around and, and get into like all the nooks and crannies of this thing. Instead of a dresser where you're just doing broad strokes on the front or on the top, in this thing, I had to like literally wrap around all these little, uh, I don't know, those little pillars to cover the whole piece. All those little details take time. And the more time it takes to do a project, the higher you want your profit to be. So to do the sanding probably took about an hour to do each coat of paint, to get all the way around and to do it by hand with a little brush took about an hour per coat. So that's, we're up to four hours now to put the wax coat on at the end was another, let's just say an hour and then to take pictures, list it and, um, ideally be responding back and forth to people who are reaching out. In this case, I didn't have to do that too much, but let's just say that whole process and then eventually to sell it would take another hour. So now I'm looking at six hours to make whatever it was going to be. So I was, I was going to try to sell it for 150 as my like max go to, and I bought it for 35. So for $115 profit, I, it was going to take me six hours to do that. $115 divided by six hours into it gives me just under um, $20 per hour that it was gonna take me to sell this piece in an ideal situation. And I'm not even putting in the cost of the paint and the sanding material and all the other stuff that went into it. So even further breaking this down, it just, from the very beginning doesn't make sense. If this thing was only gonna take me, if it was in great condition and maybe I just had to throw, it was already white and I just had to throw another coat on there, maybe sand it down, throw another coat, and that was gonna take me maybe two hours and then I could toss it up on Facebook Marketplace and see how it does. Yeah, that kind of makes sense, but to waste or to spend uh, six hours to potentially make a profit of like about 19, when actually it was much lower than that if I factor in the paint and everything else, it, it just didn't make sense from the beginning. Now let's compare that to the couch. So the couch I bought for 135. I ended up selling it for 450, which gives me a total profit of 315. It took me about an hour and a half to take the skirt off. It took me about another hour and a half to clean it. And then let's just say it took me about another hour to take all the photos, post it on 
um, Facebook Marketplace, and then eventually do the interaction where I help someone put it into their car. That gives me a total profit per hour of $78, which that actually makes sense. So that's like a, a very good, obviously much better than the smaller furniture piece. I know all couches aren't going to give me that big of a net profit, but with only four hours spent on the whole project, and that's being pretty generous, pretty conservative, um, it doesn't matter if I sell it for 450, even if I sold it for 300 or 350 or even 250. At that point, still, I have a much better profit margin and I'm spending a lot less time than on the smaller piece of furniture that I bought. Which brings me to my second learning lesson. Pick something that's in a category that's popular on Facebook Marketplace. The item that I fixed up is just listed under furniture. I didn't really know what to call it. It's not really a bookshelf. It's not really an end table. Um, it doesn't, I just, if I'm confused trying to figure out what it is or um, what it would be categorized as, I'm sure Facebook is gonna be confused on what they should categorize it, which they're not going to bump it to the top of any particular searches. Whereas the couches, someone's always gonna be searching a couch. Someone, uh, most likely if you're moving to the area, you need a couch and you're going to be searching for that on Facebook Marketplace, which is going to lead you to my item. Now, in the future, I'm going to be purchasing like dressers or nightstands or something, even like an end table, something that is much more searchable and something that I know has people searching for it on a daily basis. To sum it up, focus on larger pieces of furniture that are easier to fix that are in good categories. Think dresser or couch. These will have higher payouts and will justify the work that you're putting into them. So, would I do this next time? Am I going to continue flipping wooden furniture pieces? Um, so, I think, I think so, yes, <laughs> is my official answer. And when I was kind of thinking about this, I'm not gonna go out of my way to find these particular furniture pieces. Um, I think I'm going to stick more towards the couch flipping for right now. But if I do happen to see a nicer wooden dresser at a thrift store, a garage sale, estate sale, um, or on Facebook Marketplace, I'm definitely going to buy it. And I'm going to be trying to flip it just the same way that I did with the, the piece today. And the reasoning for that is I still think there can be a bigger profit involved in this. I've seen many different YouTubers buy things for $25, $35, $50, and then resell them for $350 um, or $300. And if you're going to be doing that and you're going to be spending six hours doing that, then great, there is a good profit in there. Um, and especially if I go to, I, I live in a smaller town, so to open up the net of things that I can buy and potentially make profit from uh, at garage sales, at thrift stores, when there's not that many around, makes sense to me. All right, so where does that leave me on my $600 journey? So I probably will sell this piece at some time. I had, at some point, I had some interest in it. There was one person that reached out, and again, uh, this happens all the time on Facebook Marketplace, but you reach out to them, say, yes, it's interested, and then nothing. You hear nothing from them. So this I'm sure is gonna happen a lot of more times. I'm gonna lower the price again, uh, leave it on for another week and see, or just leave it on until it sells and then see where I'm at. But for right now, I'm gonna chalk it up uh, as a loss on my Excel spreadsheet where I'm keeping track of uh, my $600 journey. And so as of right now, um, with the furniture piece being $35, and about another $50 in paint and supplies, I'm going to say it's an $85 loss at this point. Luckily, I sold a lot of things on Facebook Marketplace, so even with an $85 loss, I'm still at today $2,818. While I was out this week, I purchased a bunch of couches, and I'm hoping to flip those for a profit, and I'm also going out on Saturday to a bunch of garage sales and estate sales, so, Probably in the next video, you'll see uh, another couch flipping video. Um, I did find a bunch of really cool couches at uh, local thrift stores and I'm expanding my search to go to neighboring towns so I can look at their thrift stores and see if I can buy couches from them. And so um, the journey continues. So please give a thumbs up if you like the content. 
Um, again, the giveaway, the $50 giveaway, if you found the sloth at some point in the video, uh, put the timestamp below, subscribe to the channel, and I will be picking a winner next week. All right, guys, thanks for joining me in the journey, and I will see you next week.